Hey everybody and welcome to a first look at iOS 11. So iOS 11 was just announced today at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference and it has a lot of great new features that we're going to explore in today's video. So iOS 11 isn't quite released to the public just yet, it's only available to developers at this time, but there will be a public beta released later in June and the full version will be released in September. So I thought I'd give you guys a sneak peek of what's coming this fall. So iOS 11 will be available to the iPhone 5S and later, the iPad mini 2 and later, the iPad 5th generation, the iPad Air and Air 2, and all of the iPad Pro series and the iPod Touch 6th generation. So basically it's available on all the devices that supported iOS 10 except for the iPhone 5, 5C, and iPad 4th generation. So they did drop support for 32-bit devices with this release. So this is the home screen of iOS 11. So right off the bat you'll notice that they changed a couple of the app icons. So you'll see that the iTunes Store and App Store icons are now different. So they removed the circles from around the logos and they also changed the iTunes Store logo from a music note to a star. So pretty interesting changes. You'll also see that the calculator app icon has changed as well as the UI of the ca calculator app. So you can see it looks much different now. We now have a nice black background with circular buttons. This is the first time they've really changed the calculator since iOS 7. They didn't add any new functionalities to it or anything like that, but it still looks really, really cool. So also you'll see they added a new app, which is Files. So I haven't really used this yet, and I don't really have anything to display, but this is basically a nice file manager for your iPhone or iPad, and I mean that's basically all there is to it. You'll also see this new default wallpaper. So this is the new iOS 11 wallpaper. It's really, really cool. It's a nice beach one. So we go into settings and wallpaper and go to stills. You'll see the new iOS 11 wallpaper. That is the only new wallpaper they've added and they actually removed the iOS 8 default wallpaper to make room for this one. So I really like this wallpaper. It's really, really nice. But that's all the changes they've really made to the wallpapers. So taking a closer look at iOS 11, you'll see that app animation, they've changed it up a little bit. It's really, really cool. It like zooms out on the wallpaper and it might even be a little bit faster than iOS 10. But yeah, it looks really, really nice. And you'll also see that the dock on the bottom, there is no more titles for these apps that you put on the dock. So if we take it off, you'll see the titles reappear and then once you put it back on, you will see it disappear. And also, as you can see, if you have less than four icons on the dock, instead of just all grouping together, they will stay spread apart equally. So if we bring up an older device right here, you can see that they would all just be right next to each other, but now with iOS 11, they are spaced out equally, and I think that looks really, really nice. You'll also see that when you go to move an icon, it's kind of weird. Like, it's a little bit slower, and by that I mean, like, it kind of doesn't move with your finger. I mean, it kind of is right now, but... Like, as you can see, there's kind of a little delay. I'm not sure if I like this. But yeah. Now, one of the biggest changes and one of my favorite new features of iOS 11 is the control center, and it is awesome. So if we go ahead and slide up here, this is the new iOS 11 control center. It looks just amazing. So you can see everything is controlled in one single pane now. There's no two pane design like there was with iOS 10. So at the top here, you'll see just our standard controls. So we have airplane mode, you can turn that on. And we have our Wi-Fi, and they've all got nice animations. We've got Bluetooth, and for some reason, whenever I try to turn on Bluetooth, it doesn't like turn blue. It's still turning on, but it doesn't turn blue. So I don't know if that's a glitch or what. 
kind of hard to see here actually. Now one of the other really cool things is that you can 3D touch on all of these different sections and you may be thinking to yourself, this iPod Touch does not actually have 3D touch. And that's a really cool thing about iOS 11 is that this works on all devices, not just the iPhone 6S and 7 which have Touch ID. So you basically just press and hold, you don't have to like press down really hard. And it basically just does the same functions as Touch 3D Touch. But yeah, you can see the Bluetooth. Maybe it's only when you're connected to a device that it turns blue, but I don't really know. So you can 3D Touch and get more settings. You can just see all of the different things. And right over here we have our music controls. So if we 3D Touch on this, it will come up with a full player. So I can play a song. And it will take a second. Okay, maybe I don't have any music on here. But basically, it works the same as it did, as always. Um, and you'll be able to see your song information here. And down here we have our portrait orientation lock, which also has a really cool animation. You can't 3D touch on this, or the do not disturb. So the do not disturb one. Really, really cool. Here we have our airplay. So, I can't make use of this because I don't have an Apple TV, but there's just your screen mirroring menu. Right here we have our brightness controls, and it's a little bit different. We can also 3D touch on this and make it bigger. And we also have our night shift setting right here. So I can turn this on, and it will activate night shift. So they kind of, that's kind of hidden now. It's not just one of these regular icons, so you've got to go in the brightness settings and then turn it on. And you can do the same with volume. Raise and lower the volume like that. And we have just our standard toggles. We have a flashlight. We have our timer, quick launch into that. And one of the new things about the clock app is that in the timer you can now set seconds, which is really, really cool. But that's the only new thing about the clock app. That's really the only thing they changed. So going back to our control center, we can also launch the calculator, which they changed as well, and our camera. Now let's talk about the camera really, really quick, because um, they haven't really changed much. The only thing they changed is this icon to switch the cameras, and I don't really know if you guys can see this, but basically, instead of it all being white, the outline of the camera is now just a light gray. It's a very, very subtle. And another thing they changed is they made the animation to switch the cameras or swipe between modes. It's a little bit faster now. So that was just one thing I noticed. And another thing the new camera app can do in iOS 11 is if we scroll down in settings, you can see that the photos and camera now have their own separate sections instead of being combined into one. So if we go to our camera, we have a new setting for scanning QR codes. So in iOS 11 you can now scan QR codes right with the camera app, which is really, really cool. So that is basically the whole control center, but that is not all. So if we go to settings and go to our control center, we can customize this however we want to. So we can scroll down and you can see all of these new things that you can add. So. You can add as many of these as you want. You can even add all of them if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll go back and go to our control center and you can see we can scroll down and see all of them. So now I'm going to talk about all of these. So the first one we have right here is accessibility shortcuts. So if we go ahead and add that, and if you have any accessibility shortcuts, which is down here, and I'll just switch on assistive touch. And we go back to our control center. You can see the accessibility shortcut icon. And it won't work if you just tap on it. You actually have to 3D touch on it. And you can see I have assistive touch. So if I click on that, there is the assistive touch. So previously, you would activate your accessibility shortcut by triple tapping the home button. Just like that. So now you can do it from the control center, which is really, really cool. So the next one we have here is an alarm. So if we go to our control center, 
Before, all we had was a timer in terms of the clock app. And as you know, the clock has several different modes. So you have your world clock, alarm, stopwatch, and timer. And instead of having just a timer from your control center, you can also have an alarm and even a stopwatch if you want. So there's that. I didn't mean to launch the calculator. So pretty basic. And then we also have our Apple TV remote. I can't really take advantage of this because I don't have an Apple TV. But for 3D Touch, this is what it looks like. So looking for my Apple TV, which I don't have. But yeah, there's your Apple TV remote. So the next thing we have here is guided access, which is really nice to be able to have in the control center. But for some reason, it hasn't been working for me, even though I have guided access switched on, as you can see. I have it on, but it's still not working for me. So hopefully they'll fix that in the future. So let's go to the next one, which is low power mode. Now this one is really interesting for the iPod Touch because it's never actually had low power mode. See if we can go to battery and you'll see it doesn't actually have low power mode here on the iPod Touch. I don't really know why this is. Um, it did have it in early betas of iOS 9, which is when low, low power mode was introduced, but then they got rid of it, and I don't really know why, but it's kind of annoying because it's, it would be nice to have low power mode in the iPod Touch. One reason why I think this is, is because low power mode forces it to show the battery percentage, and there's also no way to show the battery percentage on iPod Touch, which is also really annoying. So that's probably why there is no low power mode on the iPod Touch. But with iOS 11, you can add low power mode to the control center right here and turn it on and it will do all the same things that low power mode will do on your iPhone or iPad. So you can see all of, this, all of these things it does. So I'm gonna continue and when we turn it on, this is gonna be really hard to demonstrate on camera, but low power mode, it kind of changes the screen a little bit so it makes it a little bit dimmer and darkens some of the colors I don't know if you can really see that but that is working on the iPod touch so it's not just a fake button that doesn't do anything low power mode is real and it is working on the iPod touch even though it shouldn't be you can also see that if we go to auto lock low power mode um, restricts it to 30 seconds and it is doing that on the iPod touch so low power mode is fully working here and well you can even see the battery turn yellow. So that's really nice to have on the iPod touch because we've never had it before. So yeah, low power mode. Next is magnifier. Magnifier was introduced in iOS 10 so we just tap on this and it will take us straight to our magnifier. And this just allows us to zoom in with the camera really really far. Um, but that's basically all it does. So before you would go to general accessibility and magnifier and once we turn this on you would triple tap the home button and you would select magnifier but now you can just do it from the control center. So next up is the mute module which is kind of weird and you can also see it doesn't have an icon yet so hopefully they'll add that. So if we add this to our control center you can see we have a mute switch just like we had on the iPad as soon as they got rid of the mute switch on the side. They had the mute toggle in the control center on the iPad. And now we can have this on the iPhone and the iPod Touch. But since the iPod Touch doesn't really have the ability to mute, um, this one doesn't really work either. So all you can really do is turn the sound effects down. Um, muting it doesn't really make a difference. It just shows that it's being muted, but like I can have the sound effects being all the way up and The mute is on and I mean like it's not really working. So yeah That one is just a fake button, but it does work on the iPhone So instead of using the switch you could use this as well. The next one is notes so this is just another app that you can add that you haven't been able to before and I'm just going to take you right to your notes. Pretty basic. 
And then next is screen recording. This is my favorite one. So previously, it hasn't really been that easy to record your screen on an iOS device. Um, you'd have to go through this whole big process. But now in iOS 11, it is built into the OS. So you can add it in Control Center, and I can just tap this and start recording my screen. You can see it is recording, recording everything I'm doing. And then once I go and turn it off, it will save the video to photos. So I can just tap that and go to it. And there is the video I just recorded. So pretty cool. Screen recording. It's a really, really cool feature. So, the next one is stopwatch. I already showed you that. We'll just basically take you straight to the stopwatch. We also have text size. So, this one has also not been working, but I assume it's just going to let you change your text size right from the control center. But yeah. And the final two is voice memos, which just takes you straight to your voice memos app and wallet which just takes you right to the wallet obviously now one of the glitches i found with the ios 11 beta is that whenever you go into the wallet app it raises the screen brightness for some reason as you can see before i had it at about half but if we go back into the wallet app it makes the screen brighter and i don't really know why it's kind of weird so that is all of the things that you can do with the control center it's a lot more customizable now, and there's a lot more features, even some new ones that we've never seen in iOS before, like screen recording. You can also just rearrange these, obviously, and really customize it however you like. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the app switcher. So if we go ahead and double tap the home button, it'll bring us to our app switcher, and it's a little bit different in iOS 11. So if I close all my apps, you can see that we don't actually have the home screen to just tap on. It's just a blurred over, so I don't really know if this is supposed to be like this or it's just a glitch, but you can just tap it basically and it'll go back to the home screen. And if you have any apps open, you just tap anywhere that's not on the app and it'll go back, or you can just tap the home button and go back. So it's kind of weird, I don't really know. So the next one is if we swipe over to our widget panel, you can see it's changed a little bit in that there's no more date at the top here. So again, I don't know if this is supposed to be like that because I kind of liked having the date at the top, if you remember, with iOS 10. But other than that, they haven't changed the widget panel at all. So yeah, it's basically the same. Um, you can't really swipe down to search, just tap that. Looks like there's no animation. So that's probably a bug that they need to fix. And the spotlight search is just the same as it was. Now the next one is something that is totally different in iOS 11, and that is the notification center. So let's go ahead and swipe down. So this is notification center, and you'll see that it looks basically exactly like the lock screen, and that's because, well, it is the lock screen. So, you can see no older notifications, um, yeah, but it's like exactly like the lock screen. You can get to your camera really quickly, and I can go over here, and this is a weird glitch I've been having. I don't really know what's going on there, but hopefully they'll fix that soon. But basically, our notifications will just show up here like normal. We can slide back down and back up. But that's the notification center, and that's the lock screen, which is basically the same thing. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So there's that, there's that. That is iOS 11. Um, a couple more things I want to talk about is, not fine friends, is tips. So let's go to this. And you'll just see we have a new iOS 11 page. So the first one is Siri, and I haven't really demonstrated Siri yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So press and hold the home button, and hey Siri. Hello, Trina. So there's Siri, 
you can see we've got this new icon and it's really really cool it's a little bit different than before so like we saw in the tips app Siri can now translate for us so if I wanted to say something like how do you say hello in Chinese Siri will automatically tell you how to say hello in Chinese. So that's pretty cool. It can just instantly translate for you, which is really, really nice. Let's go back to our tips. Um, I guess there's nothing else. So just that one. But yeah. It's iOS 11. So Siri also has a new voice. So let's take a listen to that. I'm not sure I understand. So you can hear Siri's new voice. It sounds a lot more natural and less robotic than it did before. So I'll ask, what's my battery percentage? Your iPod is at 81%. So it's a totally new voice and it sounds actually like a real person this time. So that's really, really cool. New Siri. And there's the new Siri logo. It looks really, really cool. If we go into settings, and go to the new Siri and search section so they combined those two instead of having your search in the general it's now Siri and search and all of your search settings are down here so I can turn on Hey Siri and we've got the setup screen so setting up Hey Siri is basically the same as it was before so we'll just go ahead and do that Hey Siri Hey Siri Hey Siri. Hey Siri, how's the weather today? Hey Siri, it's me. So it's exactly the same setup process and I think it's supposed to say like Hey Siri is ready here, but I guess that's another bug. iOS 11 beta 1 is filled with bugs. Um I've been having actually a lot of issues with it. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. This is probably one of the most unstable betas I've actually ever used. I mean, it's kind of been a little bit slow for me and having a lot of glitches and bugs, but they will fix it. So there's all your Siri settings. So some more things that are new in settings is we have a new section for accounts and passwords. So we have this and you can add passwords for all your websites, so you can have those here, so you'll never forget. So if I wanted to go ahead and do this, I'll just say like Instagram.com, and then my username. And my password, which I'm not going to show you guys. And then we can just go ahead and hit done. And there you can see our passwords now I'm not really sure how this is gonna work because basically anyone could go in and see your passwords so that's kind of weird but I don't really know so there's the account and password section which is really cool and next we'll go to general accessibility and I'll show you some of the new accessibility features now there's really not a whole lot in iOS 11 the only new ones is a brand new Siri section and this has type to Siri which is a new iOS 11 feature so if we turn this on and go into Siri you can see now I can just type and you could do this before like after you speak and then edit the text but now you can basically do the whole thing ty just typing Hello, Tritna. so yeah you're gonna have that and you also have your voice feedback which previously was located just under your Siri settings and it still is but now it's also in that accessibility now another new thing is for hearing devices so we have this which is hearing aid compatibility and previously this setting was located under hearing devices right here and was called hearing aid mode now they've moved it down here and renamed it to hearing aid compatibility but it's the same exact function they just moved it and renamed it now one more new thing is under assistive touch and if we go to customize top level menu and change one of these icons 
we have a new option which is to restart the device. So let's go ahead and turn on assistive touch and here's the thing and if I hit restart basically it just prompts you asking if you want to restart your iPod and you can restart your device which is kind of interesting and on that same note if you go into the general settings and scroll all the way down you have a new option for just shutting down the device which will basically just take you to the slide to power off screen so I don't know why they added that it's kind of weird but yeah that's all of the new accessibility features so there's not really a lot to talk about so some of the other glitches I found in iOS 11 is let's say we were in an app that's in landscape mode so let's rotate this and then go back to the home screen and then once we pick up an app and try to move it it will do this really weird thing and it will like flip and move all over the place and it's so weird like I don't even know it's crazy so they really need to fix that like do it again. Oh, it just rotated. I don't even know what's happening. So yeah, there's a lot of weird bugs like that. Um, there's this one in the notification center like you saw earlier. I don't even know what's going on there. So yeah, they really need to fix all these bugs. So aside from all those weird glitches and bugs, iOS 11 is just an incredible release. It is just amazing. There are so many new features and a lot of new features for the iPod Touch specifically which I was really excited about such as low power mode. But yeah that was just my quick first look at iOS 11. Of course there are tons of other new features that I just didn't have time to talk about. But that's all and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did be sure to give it a like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.